You may believe you have witnessed it all in relation to wild weather, from gusty storms to powerful typhoons and terrifying tornadoes, but have you ever seen an ice tsunami or watched the sky turn as red as blood in the middle of the day? Or have you ever been astounded by waves as tall as a five-story building that engulfed the shoreline? Extreme weather can be a lot stranger than the typical winds, rain, and hailstones. Therefore, let us explore some of the most incredible and unbelievable weather events ever caught on camera. The sea foam flood is something to behold. The sea releases mounds of foam as if a huge washing machine has gone haywire. This natural marvel occurs when the ocean's organic matter, including plankton, algae, bacteria, and fungi, starts to break down, forming numerous bubbles which are then pushed around by the wind and waves. The foam can be white, yellow, or brown, depending on the ingredients in the water, and can mount up to several meters high in certain conditions. Be careful, however, the foam can cover debris, rocks, logs, and small animals, so the experts advise onlookers to admire from a distance, it could also contain hazardous bacteria or chemicals. Oftentimes, after a storm when the water is turbulent, sea foam can be seen. Australia's east coast has experienced many extreme weather events recently, including floods, bushfires, and cyclones, all of which have resulted in extensive amounts of sea foam. For example, in December 2020, Froggy Beach in Queensland was completely covered by thick brown foam, which caused quite a commotion among visitors and the media. Upward lightning, which is lightning that strikes down from the ground, may appear strange, but that is actually what upward lightning is. Positive lightning striking near a tall structure can induce a triggered upward lightning, which is the most common and makes up 90% of all upward lightning cases. Self-initiated upward lightning, the rarer type of upward lightning, 10%, occurs when the electric field from the storm cloud is strong enough, often during winter snowstorms or thunderstorms with weak or no precipitation. For example, a thunderstorm in Rapid City, South Dakota, USA, can cause multiple upward leaders from tall towers. Thunderstorms are not exclusive to land and can be seen at sea too, such as in the Baltic Sea. Such storms form when warm, moist air rapidly rises in an unstable atmosphere and form massive clouds, some reaching heights of up to 20 kilometers. Though thunderstorms may pop up anywhere, they tend to favor tropical and subtropical regions. When they occur in the Baltic Sea, they can be intense and bring lightning that can strike up to 10 kilometers from the thunderstorm, thunder that can be heard up to 40 kilometers away, gusty winds that can cause flooding, and heavy rain that can reduce visibility and cause landslides. A glacier tsunami is mostly caused by the rapid melting and retreat of glaciers due to climate change. As glaciers shrink, they leave behind steep unstable slopes that can collapse due to the melting ice weakening the frost and ice, which increases the chance of landslides. The melting of glaciers which collects as lakes and ponds at their base adds more potential energy for a tsunami. These glacier tsunamis have been seen in many places like the Himalayas, British Columbia, and Alaska. In November 2020, a large landslide near the West Grenville Glacier in British Columbia caused a 70-meter tall tsunami that destroyed everything in its path. In October 2015, a landslide close to the Tyndall Glacier in Alaska generated a tsunami with a height of 193 meters and damaged roughly 12 kilometers of shoreline. Evidently, glacier tsunamis can be quite powerful and cause severe damage to life and property. Another natural disaster occurred at Luton Airport in August 2019, where it was hit with 1.7 inches of rain in just one hour, flooding parts of the terminal. The impact of technology on our daily lives has been immense. It has changed the way we live, work and communicate. From the way we shop to the way we stay connected with friends, technology has revolutionized the way we go about our lives. The terminal roof of the airport was inundated with water, leaving puddles everywhere and drenching the floor. Passengers captured videos of the chaos, showing water spilling from the ceiling, luggage wet and people standing in ankle-deep water. The runway and air traffic control tower were unaffected, so flights were still able to take off and land. However, some passengers were not pleased about having to wade through the water to get their bags or board their flights, and felt the airport staff should have done more to provide communication and assistance. 
This event is a reminder of how climate change impacts different sectors, including transportation. The Committee on Climate Change has warned that the UK's infrastructure is in danger from the effects of rising temperatures, sea level rise, storms, floods and droughts, and they are calling for urgent action to both reduce greenhouse gas emissions and adapt to climate change. Additionally, Lake Michigan during the winter is often subject to extreme cold and heavy snowfall. There, a lighthouse is transformed into an icy wonderland. To create such a frozen lighthouse, all that is needed is temperatures below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, liquid water in the lake, and gusty winds. Depending on the wind's direction and power, these ice formations can be as tall as 70 feet. The U.S. cities of St. Joseph, South Haven, Manistee, Ludington, Muskegon, Grand Haven, Frankfurt, and Charlevoix on Lake Michigan are known for these icy wonders. Have you ever imagined what it'd be like to witness a wall of ice steadily advancing onto the shore like something out of a fantasy novel? Believe it or not, this isn't just a figment of your imagination, it's an actual phenomenon called an ice shove. This occurs when there are changes in temperature, wind speeds, or water levels, resulting in the ice pushing onto the shore and creating walls of up to 40 feet high. In December 2020, Utah Lake had an ice shove of up to 15 feet due to strong winds following a cold snap. In March 2021, Lake Winnebago in Wisconsin experienced an ice shove that damaged many homes and docks. Let's shift our attention to Mount Elbrus, located in the Caucasus Mountains. This dormant volcano is the highest peak in both Russia and Europe, and even though it isn't a difficult climb, the weather conditions can be extremely dangerous. The severe winds at the summit can reach up to 200 km per hour and can cause blizzards, reducing visibility to nothing and temperatures dropping below freezing. In September 2021, a group of 19 climbers encountered a blizzard and two of them perished from freezing and two more lost consciousness during the rescue mission, a risky task due to the high winds and low temperatures. We can also talk about downbursts. This is a sudden, powerful blast of wind that flows downwards and then spreads out in all directions. It can be either dry or wet. Dry microbursts are associated with thunderstorms that don't bring much rain to the ground, while wet microbursts happen in heavy rainfall. How do downbursts form? Imagine a thunderstorm that quickly sends a downdraft of cold air towards the ground. This air spreads out in all directions, creating strong gusts of wind that can cause destruction to structures, trees, power lines, and even aircraft. Hungary has had its share of downbursts, particularly in the summer when thunderstorms are frequent. On July 27, 2019, a downburst wreaked havoc near Lugos, a village in eastern Hungary, with winds reaching 75 miles per hour and damaging roofs, cars, and crops. In August 2019, Oroslani, a town in central Hungary, was hit with a downburst with winds of 80 meters per hectare that uprooted trees and knocked out power lines. In June 2020, downbursts hit various parts of Hungary, including the capital city of Budapest, with wind speed surpassing 100 miles per hour, leading to extensive damage and power outages. Now let's go to Hong Kong, a coastal city that is no stranger to typhoons. These tropical cyclones form over the western Pacific Ocean and can bring intense weather to the city, such as strong winds, heavy rainfall, storm surges, and flooding. This can cause a lot of damage and disrupt everyday life. In 2022, the strongest typhoon to hit Hong Kong was Nisat, which came ashore on October 18 with winds of up to 156 km per hour and a width of 147 km. To alert people about incoming typhoons, HKO has an 8-signal system, with signal 10 indicating hurricane-force winds, winds that exceed 118 km per hour at sea level. The last time signal 10 was issued in Hong Kong was on September 16, 2018, when Mankut, the most intense typhoon since 1946, hit the city. It brought gusts of up to 256 km per hour, causing major damage and disruption. Typhoon Chanhom from 2019 was also quite a storm. It was the 14th storm and 8th typhoon of the 2019 Pacific typhoon season, forming as a tropical depression near Guam on October 4 and quickly becoming a tropical storm two days later. 
By October 8, it had become a typhoon, with maximum sustained winds of 195 km per hour. As it moved up the eastern coast of Japan, it brought heavy rain and strong winds to Okinawa, Kagoshima, Miyazaki, Kochi, Takushima, and Shizuoka, as well as flooding due to its crashing waves. On October 10, Chanho made landfall on an island near Ningbo in China's Zhejiang province, still with winds of 175 km per hour, making it a Category 2 equivalent typhoon. It was the strongest typhoon to hit Zhejiang since 1949. Upon John Holmes' arrival, China's provinces were hit with heavy rains and flooding, affecting more than 12 million people and causing over a billion dollars in economic loss. This caused disruptions in transportation, power and communication services by October 11, when the storm had dissipated over Zhangxia province. In Diego de Almagro, Chile's Atacama Desert, a huge dust storm had occurred on March 17, 2022. This town, named after a 16th-century Spanish explorer, is no stranger to dust storms. These dust storms essentially form walls of dust and debris that get blown into an area by the wind from thunderstorms. Though visually dramatic, dust storms can cause many problems for the environment, climate, human health, and various sectors. For example, they can interfere with cloud formation and precipitation, reduce visibility for drivers and pilots, damage crops and soil quality, and create health issues, particularly for those with respiratory issues. On July 4, 2022, a glacier collapse in the northern Italian Alps took place, leading to an avalanche and the loss of at least seven lives and the injury of eight others. This event was caused by a large chunk of ice breaking away from the Marmolata Glacier, the highest mountain in the area. The climate in the Alps has been changing rapidly, with temperatures having increased by 2 degrees Celsius since 1850. This is double the global average, and it is having a serious impact on the glaciers which have lost half of their volume in the same time frame. What's more, since the late 1980s the rate of loss has dramatically accelerated. This can be a big problem for those living below as the glaciers become unstable and are no longer held in place by cold temperatures. Supercells are another phenomenon that can cause a lot of damage. They are a type of thunderstorm that has a rotating updraft, and to form they need instability, lift and wind shear. Supercells can lead to large hail, strong winds, tornadoes, flash floods and lightning. The 2020 Australian bushfires were a catastrophic event, with skyrocketing temperatures and a lengthy drought leading to the destruction of 11 million hectares of bush forest and parks. The flames of the bushfires affected not only every state and territory in Australia, but the hardest hit were New South Wales and Victoria. Aside from the destruction of nature, another consequence was the widespread air pollution, which had a detrimental impact on human health. Tragic consequences included the death of at least 33 people, including four firefighters, as well as the displacement and evacuation of thousands. Moreover, 4,000 people were admitted into hospitals due to smoke inhalation and 445 premature deaths were linked to smoke exposure. Not only humans suffered, as 25,000 koalas were estimated to have perished on Kangaroo Island alone, with millions of other animals suffering across the country. The financial costs included insurance claims amounting to 2.2 billion Australian dollars, and health costs adding up to an estimated 1 billion Australian dollars. The Southern Ocean storms are a fascinating and formidable part of weather, caused by the clash between polar air and warmer subtropical air. This creates strong winds, tall waves and heavy rain, which can be a nightmare for sailors due to the reduced visibility. Additionally, these storms have an impact on our global climate, as they enable the release of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. They are often large, spanning 2,000 miles from north to south and affecting up to 4 million square miles of ocean, and they occur frequently. Furthermore, temperatures can sharply drop after the passage of the cold front, sometimes by up to 10 degrees centigrade. Tidal bores are waves or series of waves that move upstream against the current. They require certain conditions, such as a shallow river with a narrow outlet, a wide, flat estuary and a tidal range of at least 6 meters. Not all volcanoes are the same, some have been dormant for 10,000 years or more, 
while others are classified as active and have erupted in the last 10,000 years or show signs of an impending eruption. There are around 1,500 active volcanoes on Earth, with most of them located along the Pacific Ring of Fire. During an eruption, lava flows, pyroclastic flows, ash clouds, and lahars, volcanic mud flows, can all be seen. The lava can reach temperatures of over 1,000 degrees Celsius, the pyroclastic flows are a mix of hot gas and rock moving quickly, and the ash clouds can rise into the atmosphere, causing poor air quality and visibility as well as potential climate effects. Furthermore, volcanic eruptions can release various gases that can be harmful to humans, animals, plants, and can even contribute to global warming or cooling. One recent example is the Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha Pai eruption in Tonga that started in December 2021, which was the largest explosion of the 21st century, and the eruption of Mount Semeru in Indonesia that took the lives of at least 57 people. Moving from fire to water, water spouts are a swirling vortex that appears over a body of water in the form of a funnel-shaped cloud. There are two types of water spouts, tornadic and non-tornadic. Tornadic water spouts are linked to severe thunderstorms and can cause significant damage, while non-tornadic water spouts form along developing cumulus clouds and are usually weaker and less dangerous. These phenomena are most common in tropical and subtropical areas, but can also appear in temperate areas. Even though non-tornadic spouts are typically less dangerous than tornadic ones, they can still cause problems for marine life, aviation, and coastal structures. If a water spout moves onto land, it then becomes a tornado and warrants an official tornado warning. Subscribe if you enjoyed.